Hi, I'm S.C. Gwynn, author of His Majesty's Airship, The Life and Tragic Death of the World's Largest Flying Machine. Airships are one of the most interesting pieces of technology in human history. Here are five things you may not know about them. Airships are not balloons. They're not blimps. They're much bigger. They're actually enormous steel or steel alloy structures that are built to hold gigantic gas bags that are, in some cases, 10 stories high. Gas bags, by the way, that are made out of ultra-thin cattle intestines and filled with hydrogen, one of the most explosive elements on Earth. Rigid airships were first built at the turn of the 20th century by a German nobleman with a magnificent walrus mustache named Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin. The new airships had one and only one purpose, and that was to fly over the cities of Europe and bomb them, set them afire, and kill millions of innocent civilians. They were the first long-range bombers in history. They were the first weapons of mass terror in history. They introduced to humankind the idea that it could be annihilated from above by something besides a thunderbolt. Back in the 1920s, there was a tremendous competition between airships and airplanes to see which technology would be better at transporting passengers and cargo. Airplanes back then were noisy and dangerous and needed constant refueling. Airships, on the other hand, glided over the earth and could travel long distances. By the end of the 1920s, the competition was won by the airplane with a great assist from Charles Lindbergh. As weapons of war, the German-made Zeppelins were a complete disaster. It is shocking how much they did not affect the outcome of the war. They got blown off course. Their enormous surface areas meant that they were extremely vulnerable to wind of any kind. In fact, many of them were blown backwards across the English Channel. Many of the Zeppelins trying to attack England actually got lost. But the worst of all the disasters to these Zeppelins came from in the form of British fighter planes firing tracer bullets or phosphorus bullets, bullets that were incendiary, bullets that when they hit the hydrogen in the Zeppelin would cause the Zeppelin to explode just like the Hindenburg did 20 years later, which the world saw. For a few years, the skies above England were full of burning, falling Zeppelins. So after a quarter century of continuous failures, you would think that the idea of the large rigid airship or the Zeppelin would have died, but it didn't. It was in the middle 20s that Great Britain launched this extremely ambitious plan to populate the skies of Earth with Zeppelins, to use these huge 800 foot long airships to link the far reaches of their empire. And this is what they were doing when on October 4th, 1930, the their great flagship, the ship that was going to prove to the world that this could be done, R101, went up in a giant fireball over France. The original purpose of lighter-than-air machines was surveillance or spying. They, they found they're probably one of their first great uses during uh, wars of the 19th century when they became observation balloons where you could go up and you can look and you could spy on the enemy. In a way, when we see something like the Chinese balloons floating over America and doing surveillance, in fact, this is a practice that has gone on for a couple of hundred years. If you find any of these facts interesting, you're going to find a lot more of them in my book, His Majesty's Airship.